this uh, situation, the story in Nashville that we were first talking about. And this was just, what, a couple of days ago that we were talking about this story. So the, 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 this, the crux of this is that there was a story about how bars in Nashville, which are still closed down, that the, uh, some emails and discussion between city officials were noting, they were acknowledging the small number of coronavirus cases originating in bars comparing it with like nursing homes which were sky high and really discussing how it wasn't it didn't really justify the closure of these bars long story short the story was that city officials were lying to everybody about the number of coronavirus cases originating in bars to justify the continued closure of bars and it went crazy and uh there the uh, all these the tennessean looked into it all the tennessee lookout looked into it everybody was looking into this and so Here's what, and we're going to bring on my my friend and guest here in just one second on this. So one of the affiliates there, Fox 17, went and looked at it, and they were trying to say that the story is false because the emails were cherry-picked. Yet the emails say what they said, and city officials already said, admitted that they were emails in which they were discussing this stuff with each other. So what's the story on this? For this, and uh, of course on the mask holes that are running us all ragged, uh, our very good friend, and uh, you guys know him, but I know him as Glenn Jacobs. Oh, I mean, I know him, you know, what he used to do, too. Knox County Mayor there in Tennessee. It's always, Glenn, it's always so good to see uh, just a, a face of reason a vo- and hear a voice of reason because it's just, we're, it's, like the, it's like the end of the world. You know, it's like a fire hose. And this situation with the masks, which I'm going to ask you about because they were trying to get sassy with you. I saw local media was getting sassy with you on this. What's the, I mean, what is the, what's the real story here? Because it seems like, I, I don't believe that it's a false story because an email was cherry picked. I mean, you cannot take what was written by city officials in an email with their own hands out of context. Well, Fox 17 took that story off their website and I believe they retracted it. Um, what had happened was the, the, uh, the statistics had been shared months before, evidently. Um, so you know, they took it off their website and made an apology. But then th- really the broader issue is this and constitutionally more important issue is the fact that, OK, you have like 22 cases in bars mm-hmm. and then you have like a thousand cases that can be traced to construction sites. So you shut down the bars. Yeah. OK. The, a judge in a federal judge in western Pennsylvania, of course, just struck down the Governor Wolf's executive order in Pennsylvania saying that it violated the 14th Amendment, the due process and equal protection under the law clause. Well, now you're arbitrarily saying we're going to shut down your business, which because they pose a, uh, a threat to public health. You have 22 that we can trace here. You have a thousand here. So we're shutting you guys down. So you have 22. You have a thousand over here. And, you know, it's it's. Early on, you can see where, okay, we don't have the data and can't prove these things, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But now the data is starting to come in. And, you know, I think that the problem is that they're cherry picking, you know, what and what they're going to do. And this really all started when we started saying this business is essential and this business is non-essential. Right. And the government can determine who gets to stay open and who doesn't get to stay open, you know, and what criteria we use for that. And it's just open up a hodgepodge of all these different constitutional issues. And, and of course, I, I think that um, municipalities around the country are, and states and uh, counties and cities, they're going to be facing lawsuits and constitutional questions and issues for years to come because of all this. And what's happened in many cases you know, is there it's, it's conjecture by experts who are saying, well, we think this is the case, but then the data doesn't always back it up. But, mm. you know, the policymakers are still saying, well, this is what we have to do because what the experts say. And constitutionally, that's very problematic. I think you bring up a really good point, because in the beginning, before we didn't know anything about it, I mean, it could st- I mean, I still disagreed with their uh, imminent domain of the seizure of generating income, but at least they could make a better case for it. Because they could say, well, we really don't know. We suspect we're looking at, you know, how what the what the level of contagions like, you know, the shedding, all of this stuff. But now, okay, well, so construction sites and they can stay home. Nursing homes are operating the same that they were. But bars, which really have compared to all of these other things are just like the least dangerous. That seems is it just optics so that they can show the public that they look like they're doing something about it and getting a handle on it? 
part of it is you're trying to change human behavior. You know, oh, and they're saying that more. when people congregate at bars and they drink and they don't do the things that we want them to do, and certainly we understand that, uh, at the same point in time, you have to be able to prove that that is a threat to public health. Right. Uh, you have to have a rational basis for a law or a regulation. And once you start seeing that that may not be the case, that's when it's like, well, we really need to rethink this. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, part of it is this idea that uh, COVID-19 is dangerous. None of us have ever said it's not, at least I haven't. Um, you know, and I think we all realize that. Uh, but you have public health officials who are out there thinking that if, if we just keep on pushing that, pushing that, pushing that, you know, people are going to get it and they're going to do what we want them to do. Right. And I, I do think that that's part of the underlying issue here. No, I think, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, people have, you know, you can have reasonable concern for sure. I mean, just like you would have reasonable concern about sure. anything and you go off the, the facts as they're, as they're given. But there's a, there's a huge difference between being reasonably concerned based on scientific evidence and then just going chicken little, the sky is falling crazy and end up hurting a lot more people as a result of, I don't want to say over precaution, but overreaction maybe that isn't science-based because we love science. Science is great. It helps us figure stuff out, but you know that their, their response there. So was it, I mean, what is the basis? I mean, should they, should they just reopen the bars and, and kind of go like for like do what Texas is doing? I think we're at 75% capacity for restaurants and uh, I, well, our bars are still kind of closed down, but in other areas like Florida, they're approaching it. The, Mayor of Nash, uh, Nashville, actually, I'm sorry, Davidson County, it's their metro community. Mm -hmm. um, Mayor Cooper uh, actually just asked the governor for $82.6 million in additional federal funding. You know, the federal government has sent money out to the states, then, which is passed on to the cities and counties. Uh, and he asked for 80, $82.6 million additional. Of course, that means that, like my county, Knox, mm -hmm. won't get as much because that there's a pie there that he's wanting a bigger piece of. I'm not going to uh, suggest they, that you yeah. have like a ring match because you would win that. I'm not going to suggest <laughs> that, but I was going to say if there's a way to fight it out. Sure. Uh, the governor responded that uh, what Metro Davidson Nashville is doing is not aligned with what the state is doing and what the governor wants mm. to see. So basically the governor said, you need to start opening things back up. And they have, they're, they're taking some of their restrictions off, which is a good thing. Uh, here in Knox County, uh, we have a board of health. I sit on the board of health, but that's all the board of health. Uh, actually their, their regulations supersede county commission, uh, which is something that we've been dealing with because uh, uh, great people on the Board of Health, but it is an unelected body which is making policy for Knox County that supersedes county commission and my authority as well. Right. Um, they implemented an 11 o'clock curfew on bars and restaurants, um, but still that's, you know, that's much more lenient than we see in many places across the country. Yeah, even um, that's weird because and, the virus doesn't, well, guys, we're going to get well, more contagious after 11 o'clock. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I was able to get them to push that back from a 10 o'clock curfew, which is originally what was proposed, right. um, you know, we have some restaurants because they, they stop all alcohol sales around Knox County within an establishment. Um, and a lot of our restaurants that serve beer and wine or might have bars in them, they stay open until 11 on Friday, on Friday and Saturday night. So I was able to get them to push that back uh, until 11. And most of it was, you know, what their concern was, was the bars that were close to the campus, the University of Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of those things where they're trying to kind of tailor a policy that's going to hit everyone. Um, so, you know, here in Tennessee, we were one of, we were one of the first states to reopen. Um, I think that Overall, we're in a much better position than a lot of states around the country are. Governor Lee has done a, a great job in that respect of uh, keeping our economy going. And uh, you know, I'm really that puts us in Tennessee, uh, I think, in a much better position to bounce back from all of this right. than certainly a lot of states, especially the governors who went nuts and just completely locked everything down and are still locking things down at this point. Yeah, that that makes it very difficult, especially in some of these areas. They were not in the best financial position to even weather this in right. the first place, whereas, you know, Tennessee was and and Knox County for sure was. How are folks in your area? How are they handling everything with the social distancing and the masks? And I ask this because I have to bring this up. I saw an article about you. Uh, 10 News. Very serious stuff here. Mayor Glenn Jacobs is promoting Constitution Day with book reading at elementary school. It's all well and good until they asked, where's your mask? He was 
seen without a mask at the elementary school. He should have worn the mask. A lots of quote, a lot of quotes from a lot of different people about masks. And ultimately, I mean, they didn't. It was weird. They 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 said that. Well, he looks like he's physically distanced, but I mean, you're you're fit. You were more than six feet away, so. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine yeah. if you were right there, you'd have a mask on. I walked into the school wearing a mask. I wore a mask the whole time. Uh, I was speaking, and the school told me that it was fine if I removed my mask. And, uh, you know, no one was around close to me. The kids were probably 20 feet away. Uh, but it makes for one heck of a photo op. And now, of course, with, you know, the, sig- the virtue signaling and shaming and all those sort of things, uh, you know, I- I'm just, I'm really saddened because it, it feels like so much of this, it's not about health. Right. It's not about a virus. It's about a political agenda. And, you know, and we see that. We see that nationwide. And um, again, you know, COVID-19 is a serious issue, but we cannot give up the liberties that the Constitution guarantees and protects because that sets a tremendously terrible precedent going forward. We are going to have more emergencies in this country. We all know that. And if we say government, you can do anything at all that you need to do to protect us. Well, never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah, amen to that. Well, and and I appreciate, by the way, you noted the optic. I actually do think it made a good optic because you're talking about Constitution Day and everyone could <laughs> see your mouth and see what you were saying and you didn't have your face covered and you, you did the social distancing. I, th- I would have thought it was weird if it had been and you were promoting Constitution Day. One last quick thing for you. We're talking with Mayor Glenn Jacobs of Knox County, Tennessee uh, on all of the stuff that's happening. One of the things that I, I know I've heard from a lot of uh, listeners uh, who listen around the country and people who watch via Pluto, uh, that uh, no one, I, at least I can speak for myself and a lot of people out there, I don't think we're, we're not against wearing masks and we're not against being considerate of other people's health. It's being against government mandates to do so. And that's made a lot of people nervous, particularly as it relates to the issue of voting. And some people are wondering, are we going to have to wear a mask to vote? And what happens to the individuals who, you know, if they're asthmatic or they have other issues where they legitimately actually can't? And I'm sure that there are fewer of those than not, but still it is an issue. And it, then it becomes a question of, well, if the government can make you do this to go and exercise a constant constitutional right what other requirements can it put up on you yeah that's a, that's a huge question isn't it because this is not you know, this is different normally government says you you can't do something uh, in this case you have to take a positive action just to breathe in public just to breathe in public and uh, again you know i'm with you and i'm not i'm not anti-mask and i've been branded that but I'm certainly not. And, you know, when it comes to COVID-19, when we do have a vulnerable population. We know what that is. It's people who are older and people uh, who have me- compromised immune systems and those sort of things, you know. So I'm actually probably much more strict about, you know, what, what should they do? You know, right. they really need to protect themselves. Um, but for the rest of us, uh, you know, I understand that people can uh can be carriers and that they can yeah, inadvertently yeah. Uh, transmit. I certainly understand that. And again, that goes back to, you know, if you're one of those people, you also have to exercise responsibility not to put yourself in that right. situation. And your loved ones have to make sure that they're not putting you in that situation. Uh, but we've gone really a step beyond that in saying that, you know, everybody has to take this positive action in order just to interact with each other. Yeah. And um, I just I can't find a constitutional basis for that. And I also, again, when you're looking at precedents, well, what's next? I mean, what happens during the next emergency? And people might think I'm an alarmist. But six months yes. ago, did you think that the government would be demanding that everybody wears masks everywhere they go or that they can just shut down businesses or they can do all these things? Yeah. You know, so what happens when the next emergency comes along? And we don't know. But now we set the precedent that, hey, government, You can just do all this stuff, and there's literally no limitations on your authority over us as individuals. That's right. Yeah, it's not in there. There's no constitutional basis for it. It's right next to where the wishes are in the Constitution. It's the nine wishes. Yeah, that's right next to the wishes clause. Always good to see you. Mayor Glenn Jacobs, Knox County, Tennessee. God bless you. We appreciate what you do. Appreciate your voice out there. And obviously, I'm sure the people in Knox County appreciate your smart leadership at this time of all times. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks, Dana. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Take care.